Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at our constant strain triangle and actually build a stiffness matrix for an element. So this is building off of a handful of other videos, which you can find in the description below. In any case, the triangle that we're looking at is going to be relatively simple. Of course, it has three nodes, and we're defining this in X, Y space, since our triangle always looks exactly the same in C, eta space. So just building out a little table to define where these values are, let's set our node at x1 to 0.1 meters, and y there is also going to be 0.1 meters. Node 2, 0 0.2, and 0 0.25. <clears throat> node 3 is going to be 0 0.3 and 0 0.1 again. Now we're going to be looking at a thin plate which often means that we can use the plane stress simplification, which says that our constitutive matrix D is equal to the Young's modulus over 1 minus Poisson's ratio squared multiplied by a 3 by 3 matrix, which consists of a lot of 1s and Poisson's ratio. And just recall from one of our videos, the shape functions that we're looking at here are psi 1 is equal to 1 minus xi minus eta. Psi 2 is equal to xi, and psi 3 is just equal to eta. And we need d psi dx and d psi dy, which we get by taking the inverse of this Jacobian matrix which consists of derivative of x's and y's with respect to c's and eta's. And that's multiplied by the very easy to find d psi d c and d psi d eta. So now the elements of our Jacobian, dx, d, c, etc., are based just on differences in our nodal locations. So dx dxc is just x2 minus x1, which in this case is 0 0.1 meters. dy dxc is y2 minus y1, which is 0 0.15 meters. And then we can do the same for the derivatives with respect to eta, which are just the third node minus the first node. And so again, we refer to this matrix as the Jacobian. So we can say that the inverse of the Jacobian matrix is equal to this 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.15, and zero inverted. And we can find that without too much trouble, but simply put, that's just gonna be one third multiplied by 0, 15, 20, and negative 10. Now with this in hand, we can easily calculate the various values for d psi i, dx, and y. So for instance, d psi 1 dx is going to be this 0 multiplied by d psi 1 dc plus 15 multiplied by d psi 1 d eta divided by 3. So this ends up being 0 multiplied by negative 1 plus 15 thirds multiplied again by negative 1, since the derivatives in both case are just equal to negative 1 for d psi d c and d psi d eta. And so our final result here is simply negative 5. Now the units here, just to be clear, psi is unitless and x has units of meters in this case. And so this is actually times meters to the negative one, but I'm not gonna write that out for all of these. Now we can do the same thing for d psi one, d 
y, and in this case we get 20 thirds times negative 1 minus 10 thirds times negative 1. And we end up with a negative 10 thirds here. We can do the same thing for psi 2 and psi 3, but I'm just going to write out the results for these. So with all this in hand, we can go ahead and write out our B matrix. Now I'm going to bring this one third out front just so we don't have to write it a bunch of times. But for each little three by two segment of the B matrix, we're going to follow the pattern D psi DX, zero, zero, D psi DY, D psi DY, D psi DX. And so for our first piece here, we're going to end up with negative 15, 0, 0, then negative 10, and then in this spot we get another negative 10, and then a negative 15. And then we move to psi 2. So the derivative with respect to x here is 0, with y is 20, and so we'll have 20 here and 0 here, and the 0 in the two spots there. And then following the same pattern, our d psi dx for psi 3 is 5. Sorry, that should be 15 since we're, we have this 3 out here. And then 0, 0, negative 10, negative 10, 15. Where again, this chunk comes from psi 1, this from psi 2, and this from psi 3. Now our k matrix was equal to the area multiplied by the thickness of the element, multiplied by B transpose DB. Now this area is easy to calculate because this is a triangle, and so we just take the base, which is 0 0.2 meters, multiplied by the height, which is 0 0.15 meters, and that's all divided by 2. And so this is just... 0 0.015 meters squared. Our height we have yet to define, so let's give that a value. And this does need to be a thin plate, so this should be rather small. So let's set a height of 0 0.01 meters. For Young's modulus, let's make this steel. So this is going to be 220 GPA. And then we can use a value of 0 0.28 for our Poisson's ratio. Now we're also going to have a one ninth out front from these B matrices. So in addition to the units that we've listed here, the GPA and then these three meters here, there is a one per meter in each of the B matrices. Remember each of these is a derivative. So we really should be multiplying this by one per meter to keep our units up. And so all told, our K matrix out front is going to have 3.98 mega newtons per meter. And then this is going to be multiplied by a six by six matrix because what we're looking at are the six degrees of freedom of our elements here. We have U and V for each of our nodes. And what's inside of here are just numbers because we've already done the integration and we've already done these derivatives. So everything is known now. So running through these values, we get 261, 96, etc. Now, when we're writing this, we often skip writing past the diagonal because these should always be symmetric matrices. And so instead of writing out these additional values, we'll just write sim here for symmetric. Now, all that being said, this is exactly the matrix we were looking for. Now, this was 
quite tedious to do. And if I had actually done this matrix multiplication by hand, it would have taken me forever, right? But the entire point of this is to develop a process that we can build into a computer program and have that computer do that for us. So there's lots of software such as Python or MATLAB or C or Fortran or pretty much any computer programming you can think of uh, that is able to do this matrix multiplication. And then once we have all these matrices for all our various elements, we can still perform that same assembly process that we did in 1D. It looks a little bit different because uh, there's going to be a lot more elements connected to node 1, for instance. And so there's going to be more overlap between those elements. But the process there is exactly the same. We recognize that the first two columns and first two rows are associated with node 1 here, and then node 2 and node 3. And then we put all those pieces into our global matrix. And we're already rotated into X and Y, or mapped onto X and Y, if you prefer. And so there's no additional shenanigans that we need to perform. In any case, this is all I have in this video. I hope this was useful, and I will catch you next time.